Hello, my name is Keith Miller and I'm Head of Computing Maths and Digital Technology in the Faculty of Science and Engineering. I'm going to talk to you uh, about plagiarism. Uh, a fair number of cases come across my desk. Um, some people ask me how do plagiarism cases actually arrive with me and the most common way is through colleagues referring cases to me. Uh, this will be as a result of um, uh, just identifying uh, where similarity occurs and often they'll, they'll see some difference in the work that's been done to, to, to what they might expect and they will check that perhaps through Google or in my particular discipline where um, there's a lot of computer programming then they might use a specialist uh, program to check for similarity between two different programs. It's very important at the early stage to ensure that there's sufficient evidence. Um, it is likely that in some cases there will be a challenge made to the evidence, so we do have to make sure that the information that we have that will be sent to, um, uh, to, to the students if a disciplinary meeting takes place um, is, is solid. So the the colleague will come to me and I will make a judgement if there is a case to answer uh, based on the level, level of similarity between the, the, the work that the student uh, has submitted and other sources. So what are the most common issues that arise um, with plagiarism? Well, students often go to copying because uh, they're under some sort of pressure. Time pressure is, is the most common. The deadlines are coming up, they haven't done the work, and they'll take the easy way out. Another common problem is they don't actually have the knowledge they need to complete the assignment at the level they, they want to, to do. So um, they will go to, to another source. Um, it can be very challenging as well for, for some students to, to understand an assignment and how much they can talk to other students in preparing the work um, and sharing work between students can give rise to plagiarism as well. So there's actually quite a broad spectrum of cases that, 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 that can arise from um, a misunderstanding among students that, uh, uh, that they're working in a collabor collaborative way and that they're sharing their work to at perhaps at the other end of the extreme where a student will go to um, a contract cheating website, uh, who ad sites which advertise their services to provide um, uh, assignments uh, for, for payment. And each case I think requires its, its own individual response to that. Um, the most challenging thing in dealing with plagiarism cases is, is, is often the, 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 the individual circumstance of the student. Uh, for example, where a student has shared their work with, with another person, that act of sharing the work is contributing to the plagiarism and they will uh, attract a penalty in the same way that, that the person who's taken the work and that can be very difficult to communicate that, that message. And it's something that we need to make sure students are aware of um, very early on in the course that um, there was, we want students to collaborate in, in working, they shouldn't share their work in a way that it could be used by others and copied by others uh, substantially. Um, the students who are struggling as well, I, I think it's important to recognise that um, uh, we want to ensure that they uh, continue on the course, they get the support they need, but they also need obviously to um, uh, have the sanction that, that is uh, merited by uh, the plagiarism that they've, they've, they've carried out. And the university's uh, tariff for uh, dealing with plagiarism is, is quite clear in terms of how to apply that. In carrying out the disciplinary meetings, we want to make sure that there's a balance struck between um, ensuring that punishment for plagiarism takes place, but the student continues to be motivated to completing their course. In terms of you know, what steps you can take to ensure that
plagiarism doesn't occur at all. Um, there are things that can be done to design plagiarism out and to some extent any disciplinary meeting that arises should prompt all uh, colleagues to look at the, their practice in informing students what constitutes plagiarism um, and ensuring that they are aware of what they are doing to prevent or the steps that they can take to prevent plagiarism taking place. Uh, one example that, that we've had in our school is in uh, final year projects. Uh, writing, writing last large dissertations can lead, give rise to um, the desire to take shortcuts, particularly if students are under time pressure. So by getting the students into the, uh, to the idea that their work will be checked um, can prevent them uh, taking any shortcuts. We put um, students' interim reports which take place halfway through the year through Turnitin. Uh, the students actually submit that and get the reports back and they will be aware of the sorts of similarity um, that their work gives rise to and they will certainly know that the checking takes place. On assignments themselves, any individual component that you can give to the work that um, ensures that the student has to go themselves directly to uh, the source and provide an individual response again can prevent um, uh, plagiarism uh, from occurring. I think overall the, the, we, we should be uh, very aware that, that students may take this action for a variety of reasons and provide as much information at the start of the course when an assignment is given out um, of what steps will be taken to check and what students can do to avoid plagiarism actually happening.